There are four states of matter. Four, not three. We're used to seeing three of them, and all of you know it. Think about an ice cube. That's a solid. If the ice cube gets a little warm, it melts, and you get water that's liquid. If I keep heating up that water, it will turn to steam. That's water vapor as a gas. And this, solids, liquids, and gases, each that act very differently, solids keeping their shape, liquids filling up a shape of a container only so far, or a gas expanding everywhere, totally qualify as being different states of matter. But what happens if we keep hitting the gas? Let's keep heating that water molecule, right? H2O. So we got an oxygen and we've got a couple hydrogens stuck onto it. Well, if I keep putting energy into this, one of the first things I'll do is I'll break these bonds, right? I'll actually make this so I now have hydrogen atoms and oxygen atoms running around, still as a gas. But let's look a little closer at this hydrogen atom. What is it really? It's really a proton in the middle with an electron going around it. The electron is negative, the proton is positive. It really doesn't go in a circle, it's an electron distribution cloud, but the eh, basic idea. If I keep putting in energy, what's going to happen is that I will rip that electron off from the proton. Instead of it going around in a circle, instead of it being bound as an atom, this electron may be going this way, this proton that way. And it won't just be one electron and proton. What I will get is a plasma, a hot ionized gas. This is really the dominant state of matter in the universe. How dominant? Well, something like 99.9% .9 of all the mass in the universe is not a solid, a liquid, or a gas. It's a plasma. The stars are plasma. Much of the interstellar material, the gas, is actually charged. It's a plasma. And having a plasma here on Earth is not as unusual as you think either. The ancient Greeks thought of all matter made up of four things. They said, well, you know, you've got uh, Earth. It's solid. You've got wind. Gas. You've got water. Liquid. And, of course, you have fire. Fire is a plasma. And if you think about it, Plasmas do not take the shape of their container like a gas would. Look at this simple plasma ball experiment. It's an empty glass ball with gas in it, some cleverly positioned electrodes. When you turn it on, you get a plasma. And as you see those dancing tendrils in there, you can tell that is not a liquid, a solid, or a gas. It acts extremely differently. Charged particles interact with each other. I like to think of a plasma as gaseous jello. You have long-range forces between the electrons and ions that interact and pull together, but not too close since the similar charged ones also repel. There are a couple direct ways to make a plasma, as I'll show in my lab. You can take a DC discharge with two plates and put an electric field across it. We got a glass tube. The thing you hear in the background is the vacuum pump sucking the air out. We don't have enough power to break down atmospheric pressure air, at least not easily. That's what lightning does, and lightning's a plasma. 
But here, we're going to suck the air out. And then we're going to have a, a power supply, and it's going to make a voltage between the front and the back of this. And if everything works right, it should start ionizing the gas. It'll take the third state of matter, a gas, into the fourth state of matter, a plasma. So let me turn up the voltage. And actually, of course, if there's no gas in here at all, nothing can happen. So I'm going to add just a little bit more gas. There you go. And there you have a plasma. Now this is a very diffuse plasma. You can see it's taking up pretty much the entire container. Uh, it's made of the gas argon. Now if I add a little bit more pressure, what will start to happen is that this plasma is going to confine itself. And you notice now that I have a ribbon of plasma coming through here. In fact, let me make that ribbon just even a little bit more pronounced. This is really an amazing demonstration because I have about one-tenth of an amp going from this electrode to this electrode. It's electricity. You can actually see the electricity. The wire is not your normal copper wire. The wire is made out of hot ionized gas, out of a plasma. Anytime you put a current down a wire, it makes a magnetic field. And plasmas are no different. You might not recognize that there's a magnetic field, but if I take another magnet and I put this magnet near here, look at it bend. Look how I can actually move the plasma around because it has a magnetic field, and so do I. It's like taking two magnets and being able to move little cars on a table. So I can actually shape the, magnetic, the plasma with my magnetic field. Turn the magnetic field this way, it goes one direction. Turn it the other way, it goes the other direction. This property of being able to affect where plasmas go using a magnetic field is how we are going to make fusion energy work. You could also put a changing electromagnetic field, radio waves, just like those in a FM or AM radio tower, like this demo. Here, I have another type of plasma. As opposed to having an electrode on each end and just running a DC current, this has a radio frequency, just like the same frequencies you use for radio stations. And that means at something like 15 million times a second, the electric field goes from one side to the other to one side to the other, a radio wave. The coil inside there is my antenna, and that coil allows the electrons to be excited by this changing electric field and therefore create a plasma. This is more in line with the types of plasmas that are used in microelectronics, but also this is a way to heat a plasma. If we're going to make fusion, not only do we have to make a plasma and we have to confine it using the magnetic fields, but we have to heat it up. So since I can add power to the plasma, if I take my power supply here, and I turn up more watts, you can see that I can make more plasma. RF heating is one of the multiple ways to be able to heat a plasma hot enough to make fusion energy. And that's what you need to know about a plasma.